Good evening, everyone. Uh, I think everyone can, uh, can hear me. Uh, we are going to start the discussion of the paper. I think everyone can hear my voice. Is it audible to everyone? Yes, we can hear. We can hear. Yeah. Then we will start the paper discussion without uh, waiting more time. Uh, we will be straightforward to uh, go to the paper and see how are we going to tackle this paper, Advanced Management Accounting. Okay, I'm sharing the paper with you. I think you already received the paper. While reading the paper, the very important instructions, you have 15 minute reading time and you have three hours, uh, three hours to answer the paper. And on the other hand, you have to answer uh, three sections which contain uh, call several questions to be answered, including 10 MCQ questions. Right. I think uh, I'm not going to detail about the composition because you might already aware about that. Then I will directly move forward to the first section, multiple choice question, MCQ section, which carried 20 marks of your total allocation. Right. We'll read the first question generally. First two, three questions coming from the first uh, section A, cost management. If you look at about the first question, you can relate it to cost management section. With the development of technology and requirements in modern business environment, many changes have taken place, right? They have given uh, five changes, right? Which of the now we say which of the above are special features in modern environment in comparison to the traditional management accounting? Therefore, this is relevant to the modern manufacturing environment topic. If you read this one, these five, we have to identify which are correct. First one, reduction in dependence of absorption cost years. We are more focused on the activity based costing. Therefore, you can consider it as a change. That is correct. Number two, increase in utilization of activity-based cost years. In, instead of absorption, we are using activity-based costing. That's correct also. Third one, uh, increase in the fixed overhead component in production cost. Is it accurate? Increase in fixed overhead? Yes. Because it is accurate, most of the production process is being automated. And on the other hand, labor requirement will reduce. Now you can see a decrease in dependency on labor. That also correct. All four correct. Fifth one, increase in the cost of raw materials. That you can't, that is not relevant to the modern business environment. Right? Whether you conventional or modern, material prices based on the demand and supply. Therefore, it is not a part of, not a implication of modern manufacturing environment. Therefore, you can't consider this fifth option, fifth answer as correct one. Therefore, one to four, one, two, three, four, first four answers are correct. The answer carried in answer A, that is the correct answer that you need to keep in mind. Right? Merely, I'm just explaining because these you might have already gone through. Now, just I explain the background. Okay, 1.2. While you are looking at the given information, look at this one. A manufacturing company produces a product that requires two machine hours per unit. The variable machine time, the available machine time is 500 per week. The product is sold at 2,600 per unit. The total variable production cost, which contains direct material and direct labor, is 1,500 per unit. The direct labor cost per unit is 500. That means direct material should be 1,000 and production overhead cost per unit is 400. Weekly production and sales are 250 units. <clears throat> now, throughput accounting ratio of the product you asked to calculate. When you're going to calculate throughput accounting ratio, the only variable cost, remember, only variable cost is direct material. Now we will work it out. Now you asked to calculate throughput accounting ratio. How to calculate throughput accounting ratio? I will show you. <clears throat> I think you can see this one. Okay. 
whiteboard. I'll say TAR. TAR means to put the county ratio equal. Return, return per factory hour divided by cost per factory hour. Cost per factory hour. That's how we will calculate throughput accounting ratio. Now, in this illustration, if we look at return per factory hour, how to calculate? We will look at selling price. Price. Price per unit. Selling price per unit, how much? Selling price per unit, 2,600. Selling price per unit, 2,600. The only variable cost, remember, the only variable cost is direct material. You have to deduct less direct material. Direct material, how much? Based on the given information, you have the product is sold and total variable production cost, which contains direct materials and direct labor, 1,500 out of that. Labor cost is 500. That means material cost only 1000 rupee. If you deduct 1000 rupee, then you will receive <laughs> throughput contribution per unit. Per unit. Throughput contribution per unit is 1600. 1600. Throughput contribution per unit is 1600. But this is not sufficient. Now you have to calculate return per bottleneck hour, return per factory hour. Then bottleneck hour is limited resources, machine time. Therefore, how many machine hours required per unit? In the illustration, say two machine hours required per unit. I will say bottleneck hours per unit. Bottleneck hours per unit. Bottleneck hours per unit is two hours. Now you can easily calculate return per factory hour 1600 divided by two. Return per hour should be 1600 divided by two. That is 800. Right, that is 800. Now you have the return per factory hour. Now you have to find out cost per factory hour. When you are going to calculate cost per factory hour again, I will share the screen. <clears throat> now you can see they have a budgeted capacity of 500 hours per week. Each required two machine hours mean budgeted production 250. Then even though other costs are variable, they will consider as fixed. Then all other costs, direct labor, variable production of it, both should be considered as fixed. We will calculate a total fixed cost or total factory cost, and then we will find out the total factory cost per hour. You will operate 500 hours. Now here they have given each unit labor cost is 500, overhead is 400 per unit. Then budgeted production, 500 divided by 2, 250. Now we will work out. I will work out um, budgeted production. Budgeted production, 500 hours are available, two hours required each, that means 250 units, 250 units you will manufacture budget. Right. Then you have to calculate total factory cost. Total factory cost. Even though other costs are variable except material, all other costs will be considered as fixed. Total factory cost. Take uh, labor 
direct labor. It says 500 per unit, then you will manufacture 250. Then 250 into 500, it should be how much? It should be 125,000, I think. <clears throat> 125,000. That is direct labor. Variable production overhead, it said uh, 400, 400 uh, rupee per unit, or it was 400 rupees per unit into budgeted production 250. It will be 100,000. Total factory cost, if we calculate, total factory cost will be 125 plus 200, uh, 100,000, Now you have to find out, you have required, you are available, you are available 500 hours only, machine hours only. Therefore, now you have to incur total cost of 225,000. Therefore, cost per factory hour, per factory hour, will be equal to 225,000 divided by number of hours. Number of hours. Then you will receive an answer. It should be 450 rupees. Now you can calculate PAR. If you calculate return per factory hour 800, I will work out here itself. 800 divided by 450, then you can get the answer. It should be 1.78. Get the answer. It should be. 1.78 hope you have understood and if you want uh, you can uh, uh, incorporate or you can copy, uh, take a screenshot and keep it as yourself there's no issue now we will move to the next illustration therefore what will be the answer let's see the answer will be answer c 1.78 1.78 that is second question. I will move to third question. We will clearly uh, look at third question. Which of the following statement best describe the difference between activity-based costing and activity-based management? Remember, in activity-based costing, we are measuring uh, the performance of various of activities, cost, and all those things. But equity based management, Lua, you are focusing on a strategic decision making, right? We will see. Which of the following? First one A. ABC measures the performance of various activities, cost subjects, and resources, while ABM focuses on applying the lessons from ABC to improve decision making at both operating and strategic levels. Okay. B. ABC focuses on the management of activities as a method of improving value for both. Custom and the firm, while ABM mainly recognized the casual relationship of post drive. That is all. Not the casual relationship. You will look at the direct relationships and you will use the idea you have obtained from the activity based costing will be used to uh, enhance the efficiency of activities. ABC helps organization to make informed decisions about product mix, processes, resources, and utilization of investment. Etc. While ABM help organization giving input data, no, ABM is not a, not giving input data. ABC give input data for the ABM. Implementation of ABC is much more complicated as it needs more resources and active involvement of the management. While the implementation of ABM is relatively simple, no, ABM is much complex than ABC. Therefore, your correct answer should be answer A. <coughs> Answer is the correct answer. Right.
then we will move to uh, question number four, fourth question. I shall read it to you. An electrical way, I'm fastly moving in, otherwise within a given time period, we may not be able to complete. An electrical vehicle charging electric vehicle charging station was constructed by a company incurring a capital cost of six million. This station is expected to serve two hundred units a year at fifty rupees per unit. The useful life uh, of the project is five years. The expected operating cost per year is rupees five million, and this amount includes rupees one point six million of overhead cost charged by the head office as a rent for the premises, all right. They are charging rent 1.6 million. It include out of this 5 million, okay. Capital assets are depreciated throughout their lifetime following the straight line basis and the operating cost include the yearly depreciation. Now, out of that 5 million, it include the yearly depreciation as well. That means entire 6 million being depreciated. Okay, anyway, in life cycle costing, we will consider total cost in federal life cycle. Therefore, if we can either consider 6 million initial investment as a bulk, or we can consider as a total depreciation, both are same. And you should not duplicate. If you take 6 million initial investment, you should not include depreciation because this asset, this asset is being depreciated over the period lifetime. <clears throat> At the end of the uh, uh, year five, the charging station is to be dismantled and premises to be cleared, incurring one rupee, one rupees, one million. That means you have to have a clearing cost. If the target profit margin of the company is 50%, which of the following statement is correct? You have to find out the correct statement. Now, while reading this one, first you have to calculate the total cost in of the life cycle. Right, then now you have a target profit margin of 50%. Then you have to calculate your target cost and what is your estimated cost. The difference is the target cost cap. This is not for a unit, they are asking for lifetime target cost cap. Okay, we'll do, we will work it out quickly. Okay, I will go to the calculation. Right. I will do the calculation in a second. I need to paper right. Okay. First, we have to pay rent now. Now we have a operation cost of uh, five million per annum. Out of that, we have to pay rent amount, rent expense paid to expense. We have to pay. 1.6 million each year over next five years. Right, next five years. Then total amount should be 8 million. That is rent expenses. Now, remember, you said that operation cost input 5 million. Out of that 5 million, 1.6 for the rent. There's another 1.2 million, that means your capital has a depreciated of five years now. Therefore, depreciation. Depreciation. How much? Your six million will be divided over five years. That means 1.2 million each. 1.2 million each. Into five years anyway. Five years. Then it is. 6 million. That means initial investment you have depreciated or fully you have depreciated. Now out of 5 million total operational cost, rent 1.6 1.2 depreciation. Then variable cost or other cost, other, vari uh, other variable cost. How much? Other variable cost. Now, if you read the illustration, out of 5 million, right? Out of 5 million, 1.6 and 1.2, 2.2 million, you will incur per annum. This will be incurred over five years period. 
right five year period then it will be 11 million <clears throat> 11 million not only that there's another cost dismantling cost dismantling cost at the end of the period you have to dismantle this premise while spending 1 million 1 million now you have to take the total life cycle cost total life cycle cost that means cost incurred over the life cycle total so, so. Total life cycle cost. Right. Total life cycle cost will be 26 million. 26 million. Total life cycle cost 26 million. Now, in the illustration itself, it said that the output will be 200,000 over five years. Right. Life cycle output. Output or life cycle. Total output over life cycle. Total output over life cycle. If you work it out, 200,000 output will be there over annum. 200 into five years, it will be 1 million. Now, if you calculate life cycle cost per unit, right? I am a little bit faster because within the given period of time I have to complete. <clears throat> life cycle cost per unit. Life cycle cost per unit. How to calculate? Total cost incurred over the life cycle. Okay. Total cost incurred over life cycle. Life cycle will be divided by <clears throat> will be divided by divided by total output over life cycle total output over life cycle. I'm just reminding you because now it is very close to your final exam. I'm just reminding you. Therefore, 26 million million divided by 1 million output. The estimated cost will be 26 per unit. This is the estimated cost. Now, if you go back to your uh, paper, right, then it will say, it, it says how many uh, Sorry, yes, your profit margin is 50%. Your profit margin is 50%. Therefore, if you remove the profit margin, then we will see what should be the cost, target cost. Selling price. Selling price. 50 rupees per unit. Then deduct profit margin. 50% 50, 50 into 50% 50 it is 25 rupees. Then target cost per unit 25. Target cost per unit 25. Now, easily you can work out what is the target cost cap per unit and multiply by the output. Then, estimated cost. Estimated cost per unit. 26 target cost per unit. 25 then target cost gap per unit 1 rupee 
target cost gap per unit one rupee one rupee then your output one million that your lifetime target cost gap lifetime target cost gap will be one million one million means one rupee per unit into number total life cycle output one million output over there right that the answer now you will see what is the answer given <clears throat> what will be we have to consider right it is one million lifetime target cost capital this is the answer you have to consider answer a is the correct answer right we will move to question number five read the question will leave <clears throat> a company has realized that its credit department spent around two months to reconcile the data accounts. Okay. They will take two months to reconcile the data accounts. Due to this, the company has been unable to send the quarterly outstanding balance statement on time and the recovery action also have been delayed. Okay. That, that's an operational issue. After careful analysis, it was noted that the credit department will spend around 50% of its time to manually match the advance payment and debit and credit balances made for entries related to returns and customer discounts. The credit department needs to put more effort to coordinate with the sales and finance departments to ascertain these details. Okay. Which of the following is the best business process re-engineering proposal to deal with the above problem? Now, they are manually processing. Most of our companies are facing this issue. Most of the activities being carried out in manual form. Then what can we do to eliminate these unnecessary work and how to expedite the operation? Right. Okay, if you look at first one. As is the total man is required to fully reconcile with the balances by the credit department and recruit additional staff to clear the mandates. Do we do that? Since there's so many reconciliation to be done, you will if it's a manual task, you will uh, recruit new staff. No, it is not a good option. It will increase the cost. What is the value creation? Whether you have to reconcile it or not, your value creation will be minimal. Then request the credit department to enter the data advance payments and the debit and credit entries for return and discount so that the coordinating time could be reduced. Even though they ask to do that, it also do have to do it manually. Again, it is not the credit department. It will take any other department's time. It will not be a good option, right? See, IT needs to improve the data module to automate the set of entries further as is the post automation HR time budget and take action to design the department's scope. Yes, definitely that's the way to do that. There are some credit debit entries you can automate though, those things. Uh, while setting it off without putting it manually, then so much of time will be uh, saved. Right? That answer will be much more reliable than others. We will seek look at the as well. The credit department to send the unreconciled outstanding balance statement to waiters. You can't. If it is unreconciled, you can't send the unreconciled balance to customers. That is totally out. The answer should be C. IT, you need to improve the uh, or automate the processes that should have been done. You can consider that. All right. Uh, creative uh, manufacturers makes current uh, flower pots and its actual output for last month was 4,500 pots at the total material cost of 3,150,000 for 19,000 kilograms of cement. CM's budgeted production for the month was 5,000 pots at a material cost of 820 rupees per pot. The cost will be 820 rupees per pot. The standard material requirement was set at 4 kilograms per pot. However, the review of actual result indicated this, that this material requirement should have been 4.2 kilogram per pot at a cost of 
945 rupees per pot. Right now we will look at based on the given consideration how to work out material price planning variance. I will work out here itself. When you are going to do the material price variance, how to work it out? I am not seeing any interaction with you. Mate direct material price planning planning variant. You will compare original price. I will say OP. Original price versus price versus original price versus revised price. RP revised price into revised quantity of the actual production revised quantity now here original price original price what is original price 820 for the material cost of 800 4 kilogram per pot that means 820 the material cost per uh, pot is 820 but uh, it requires 4 kilogram of material therefore if you divide uh, 820 right by 4 it should be 205 original price is 205 Revised price. If you look at the revised price, um, nine, cost of 945 rupees are there. 945. This is for 4.2 kilograms. It becomes 225 revised price. Now you have required revised quantity. Revised quantity earlier 4 kilogram, now it is 4.2. Actual production, 4,500 pots. Therefore, the revised quantity should be 4,500 actual production into 4.2 kilogram. Right. Then if you work it out, there will be an adverse variance here. Adverse variance will be how much? 20 rupee adverse per kilogram into 100 into 4 point is it 378,000 it is an adverse variance 378,000 it is an adverse variance that is the answer 378,000 adverse variance i think this is under variance analysis question you should have been should be able to complete that you will be able to complete that answer you can calculate the answer is this one i will remove this one and right answer should be 378000 adverse 378000 adverse Right. Now look at the following are some management decision relating to capacity modification. Uh, then this is relating to your capacity planning lesson. Now look at all of the syllabus content will be tested in the paper. Therefore, nothing will be tested beyond the syllabus content. Therefore, you have to familiarize with all the areas. Right. Create this uh, modification decision. Selling of existing production machinery, okay. Re reducing overtime allocations, reducing the inventory of finished goods, discontinuation of production operation located in a rented premises, early settlement of mortgage loan in full, which was taken to purchase a production machine. Which of the above are long term capacity modifying strategy? They ask for long term capacity modifying strategy. Uh, 
long term, the short term arrangement, you can go to a rented place, uh, you can uh, mortgage, settle, settlement of mortgage, those are short term. If you look at first one, selling of existing production machine, mean you are not going to continue. It is a long term decision. You are going to sell your production machine, I mean you are going to discontinue the operation. Step number one is correct. It's a long term capacity modification strategy. Discontinuation of production operations located in rented premises mean that when you are scale down your operation, the first and fourth should be considered as long term capacity plan. Reducing over time, it is a short term one. Reducing inventory of finished goods, short term, and early settlement of loan, short term. Long term are one and four. Therefore, answer should be A. Right. This one is zero base budgeting, 1.8. Look at the scenario, will you? Uh, consider the following in relation to zero base budgeting. Is that BP? While reading 1.8, it is based on the organization present needs and complexity, and it is an efficient way of budgeting. Is it an efficient way of budgeting? Yes. It is an efficient way of budgeting. Because you will, in zero-based budgeting, you will rationalize the expense, and when it is rationalized only, you will include it. Number two. It is simple and cheap way of doing budget. Hence, it could be completed without much management effort. Can you do that? With the, it's a simple effort like uh, incremental budgeting. What is the incremental budgeting? You will at them 5 or 10 percent, you will do some modification last year budget. The deficiencies will be carried out. But in zero-based budgeting, you have to do from the stretch. You have to justify each and every expense need to be justified to include in the budget. Therefore, this is not an easy task. Therefore, number two is wrong. Right, then number three. It supports the reduction of unwanted expenses here and then it's lead to cost optimization and savings. Right, that is correct. Therefore, one and three, correct. Therefore, answer should be B. Answer should be B. Answer should be B. That is for 1.8. Right? Okay. Actually, I'm explaining this concept very fast. The reason now we are prompting to final examination. Therefore, we have to be familiarized with this concept. But let me know. I will help you throughout the period. And even after, I will help you out and I will let you know how to, because you need to pass this exam. When you're going to pass this exam, you have to understand the concept and next few period you have to focus on. Uh, before end of the session, I, I will let you know what, what are the factors to be considered when sitting for the next exam. Then it will be helpful for you. Now, ninth question. Which of the following is true when using Monte Carlo simulation model to estimate the net present value of the project? In Monte Carlo simulation model, what we will do, we will assume a normal distribution of, uh, we will plot project variable or project factors which affect to the project NPV into a normal distribution, right? Based on that, you will calculate the probability. Yeah. Which of the following is true when using Monte Carlo simulation model to estimate the net present value of a project? Okay, it assumes that the main factors affecting to the NPV of the project can be modeled as a probability distribution. A minimum of two uncertain variables affecting the NPV must be available in order to perform the simulation, not only two. The values of the variable affecting the NPV will be plotted on a probability distribution, not to values the factors affecting the NP. Only one single uncertain value can be considered in any simulation model. No, this is the correct answer. It will consider main factors affecting the NPV into a Monte Carlo simulation model when developing may affect into NPV. Answer A is the correct one. Final question. Right. 
in this question you will be asked to a company forecast surplus funds in working capital this is related to working capital management a company forecast surplus funds in working capital of 20 to 50 million for the next six months consider following options what are the options Deposit the funds in a six-month bank deposit at an interest rate of 16 million per annum. Right, that can be done. You can earn some interest out of the idle fund. Settle 90-day creditors in 30 days to obtain the early settlement discount. Yes, if you have a surplus cash, you can get the discount while settling them early creditors. Purchase of material on cash base at a discount of 9% from the Price offered on a 90 day credit period. Now you can get a bulk discount of the asset. Invest shares in Columbus Stock Exchange. Even you can do that in short term. You can because you can easily realize that. Because month six months mean it's a short term one. Therefore, which of the above options could be considered by the company for utilizing the anticipated surplus fund? If you have a surplus fund in short term, you can use those options to invest. Therefore, this is the correct answer, all of one, two, three, and four. Those are the options. You can, because it is short-term investment opportunity, when you have a surplus cash. Right, that is the end of a section. I have a little bit faster to get give you a proper understanding. Okay, now we will move to, well, remember it allocated 40 minutes time actually right sorry 36 minutes 36 minutes but we have taken around 40 minutes that's okay now we will move to the next section now look at this section number two in section number two we are looking at this come uh, relating to activity based costing right activity based costing look at this one and you ask to calculate profit for the year earned by each customer type based on the activity based costing principles right okay you have look at nature foods private limit nfl is an agricultural product manufacturing company its main product manufactured is coconut oil nfl has three main customer types okay there are three main customer types industrial buyers distributors and supermarkets the company at present does not analyze the revenue cost and profitability of each type of customer type to see whether any improvements are possible. That means this is related to customer profitability analysis. With further analysis, the NV NFL record the following information was extracted with respect to the year in the 31st March 2023. Read this video. Product and link. Customer level operating cost 12.6 million. Cost driver quantity sold kilograms. Order processing 2.6 million number of sales orders. Transport to customers 7.4 million kilometers travel. Then customer visit 2.4 million number of customer visits. The cost of coconut oil sold without customer level operating cost for the year was. 113.4 million. The general selling price of coconut oil is 750 per kilogram, and the following discounts are applicable for each type of customer. Uh, right. Discount industry of 15%, distributors 20%, supermarkets 25%. Right. Calculate the profit for the year earned by each customer type based on the activity based costing principle. If we apply activity-based costing principle, how are we going to deal with this illustration? Right. If you work it out, first you have to take the sales values, right? Then you have to uh, analyze into uh, uh, based on the activity cost, right? If you analyze uh, total quantity sold, the selling price is 750 per kilo, right? First, we will prepare an analysis. Uh, 
I will work out in an Excel. I will better if I can take an Excel. Right, give me a second. I'm not going to uh, show you the entire one. I will just show you how to do that cal calculation. Hope you can share, see my screen. Right. There are three different customers types. Mm. Industrial. Distributors, distributors, supermarkets, sales quantity they have given, sales quantity, industrial it is 148,000 kilograms, distributors they have mentioned 50,000 kilograms, supermarket it is 54,000 kilograms. Right. Selling price seven fifty each. You can calculate gross sale proceed. Gross sales proceed. This multiplied by seven fifty. Now you can see this is the net sale proceed. Okay. Now you have offered discounts, discounts. Discounts you have deduct. You have deduct discounts. You have given, uh, industrial given 15% discount. Multiplied by 15%. That is for industrial. Then, uh, if you look at about uh, distributors, they have given twenty percent discount. Twenty percent discount. Supermarkets, they have given twenty five percent discount. Twenty five percent. Now you have to calculate what is the net sale proceed. Net sale proceed. If you look at the net sale proceed, these are the net sale proceed of each customer. Right. Now, out of that, now you have to allocate activity cost. There are some activity cost given. You have to highlight what is the activity cost of each customer segment. Look at product handling based on quantity sold. I will take one and thereafter I will show you how it has been made. I will work out one. Now first activity, product handling cost. Cost driver, quantity sold. That means product handling cost will change according to number of unit or number of quantities sold. That is kilograms given by right. product handling. Now I am going to work out activity cost cost out of activity cost first activity i will take product handling i will take it as working number one working number one product handling working number one keep it working number one Okay, I will leave a space and I will prepare working number one here. Now you have three types of customers. Right. Now I need to, sorry, before that, uh, cost. Cost of product handling cost given 12.6 million. 12 million 600,000. Cost driver. 
number of units sold. Number of units sold they have given. If we take these three, industrial distributors and supermarkets, industrial, uh, we have the answer. These are the quantities. These are the quantity. If you take the total, two hundred fifty-two thousand. Therefore, cost per unit equal twelve point six million divided by two hundred fifty-two. It is fifty rupees. It is fifty rupees. Then you can allocate among the these three. 148 is the output. You can multiply 148 into 50 rupees. Right. 100, sorry, index one, 50 into 50. I am here drag and drop. These are the cost allocation. Now I will deduct. Product handling cost for industrial 7.4 million. And distributors, it is 2.5 million. And supermarket, it is 2.7 million. This is how we are doing the calculation. Likewise, all for other cost, we have to deduct it from the here. And there are the activities, if I uh, recall, order processing, same. Order. Processing, then uh, transport to customers, third activity, transport to customers, and fourth activity, customer visit. You have to, based on the activity consumption, you have to allocate the cost. Right here in activity based costing. Customers will be allocated the cost based on the level of activity they have consumed. Then I will show you the suggested solution. Then you can uh, look at the answer. You can see the same way which I have allocated. Order processing will be allocated based on number of orders. Transportation to customers will be allocated among the customers based on the number of customers, sorry, uh, kilometers traveled. Customer visit cost based on the number of customer visit, it will be allocated among the customers. Right. That is how the answer should be looks like. Here also I have done the calculation and showed it to you. And you can work out and this is the way to prepare it to get an idea. You can get an idea how to do that. This is activity-based costing. If you learn activity-based costing, you can easily apply that concept into customer profitability analysis also. Same application like activity-based cost. There's no change with that. Hope you have understood that one. Right, next one. Mm -hmm. Look at, explain two suggestions to improve the current profitability of the company. How to improve the profitability of the company? You have to tell uh, while looking at the given scenario, what you can do increase the profitability. You have to see which section uh, has the lower profitability and which section has the higher profitability. Now, based on the illustration uh, given, we'll have the higher profitability. I will show you. We have the higher profitability in industrial sector. Then you can allocate more resources to promote that sector, sector and increase the total sales. And then you can increase your overall profitability. Clear? That you can do. 
right? Then, again, what is that two strategies they are asking? Then what you can do, you can uh, second largest higher profit supermarket and thirdly distributors. You can see the customers who are uh, who can convert into uh, cust uh, potential customers who may can convert you from the uh, promotion and advertising campaign. Which type of customers are required? As an example, supermarket we can do the promotion and advertising. Then you can increase the sales that you can do. Those are some strategies you can uh, suggest. In distributors, you can offer some discounts. In a supermarket also, you can carry out some promotion. Likewise, all three segments, you can suggest some strategies to uh, increase the sales. They are asking only for two strategies. Right, that first question, second, uh, first question of the section two. It's training, so sometimes we can't hear your voice. Uh, give me a second. Now is it audible, right? I think it's raining outside and I'm covering in the meeting room. Sometimes there might be disruption, right? Anyway, hope you can hear. If you can't hear, let me know. Right. Then I will move to question number three. Look at question number three. Uh, this is uh, relevant to short-term decision making. Right. Okay, we'll see. Uh, Louis Manufacturers Private Limited LML makes yarn for apparel manufacturer. They are manufacturing yarn. Okay. Its products are one of the best local solution and the quality is also equal to the quality level of world-class yarn manufacturers. The company serves a local market which is dominated by international brands. Despite many efforts, LML has still not got the opportunity to prove the quality of its product and break the customer loyalty for international brands. One, however, once the customer is on over, one over LML can be the long term business relationship via its quality products. The company follows the policy of full cost plus pricing, adding 30% markup. That is their pricing strategy full cost plus 30% profit markup, right? Given below are the details of LML's operation in May 2023. Monthly budgeted sales were 50, sorry, 5,000 yarn packs. However, due to the economic crisis, sales dropped to 2,500 yarn packs a month, and this condition will to be same throughout the current year. Uh, sales will be dropped to 2,500. Yarn is made out of the cotton bales. The opening Cotton bales in stock was 96 million, and the cost of cotton bales issued during the month was 12 million to produce 2,500 packs. All right, nine 12 million for 2,500 yarn packs. There was no work in progress in the process and no restriction in sourcing material. Other direct cost of manufacturing were 5 million. Monthly budgeted fixed production overhead cost will be 6 million. Right, okay, those are the information. Due to the economic crisis, the apparel manufacturers who rely on imported yarn are facing difficulties in sourcing yarn. Recently, one of the apparel manufacturers had called for quotation from local yarn suppliers to supply 1,500 yarn packs a month. This order will last at least for the next six months and many yarn suppliers that have uh, quality product have quoted for this. The business intelligence unit of LML has found that the maximum possible quote to be successful in the order is 7.8 million, sorry, 7,800 per yarn pack. 
However, this price is much lower than LML's current selling price per pack. Hence, the sales manager is not in favor of this. So, okay, he's not agree with this one. Compute LML's current selling price per pack. Three marks. Discuss whether LML should accept or reject the new custom order. Make accept or reject decision. Shall we quickly calculate their current selling price? Okay. I will share the screen with you. We will quickly work it out. This is question number two. Two, and we will work out question number three. Q, three. Question number three. Right, okay. Question number three. Right, okay. Now, present prices we have to consider. Now, you have raw material we have to consider. What are the raw material? Yarn. Sorry, cotton. 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 In order to manufacture 2,500 uh, yarn packs, you have to spend 12 million, right? 2,500. If you calculate that 12 million divided by 2,500, it is 4,800. Cotton, cost of cotton. Then in addition, you have to spend uh, other direct cost, 5 million. Other direct cost, 5 million. Direct cost. Because you are manufacturing, at the moment you are manufacturing 2,500 packs of yarn. Then 5 million divided by 2,500. It should be 5 million divided by 2,500. It is 2,000. Okay. Then other fixed cost, other than yes, monthly budgeted fixed overhead cost is six million. Month budgeted fixed cost, fixed production or I will say fixed production or cost six million. Six million. Six million. What is what, what is the division? What should be the amount? It should be distributed among how many units? You have budget capacity of five thousand a month, even though you use two thousand five hundred. Actual capacity is two thousand five hundred, but you have budget capacity of five thousand. Right. Therefore, six million should be divided among the five thousand. That is thousand two hundred. Right. Thousand two hundred. Then all together. If you take the total, if you take the total current selling price, current selling price will be not 8,000. Give me a second. The current cost, they ask for the current selling price, right? Yes, they are asking for current selling price. Uh, you have this is the current cost total cost the total cost is 8000 total cost 8000 you have a 30 percent markup into 30 percent 2400 your selling price will be 10,400. Selling price. Selling price will be 10,400. That you have to calculate. That is the part one. Okay, part two, what they asked to do. That first part we have done. 
discuss whether LML should accept or reject the new customer order. Your answer should describe both financial and non-financial reason for the arriving the decision. Right. Financial perspective now, the maximum price you can put 7,800. But your current selling price is 11,400 or 10,400. 10, Based on current prices, you may not recommend to sell this one. If you remove the markup, if you look at about the cost point of view, the 7,800 will not cover your total cost even. Because your total cost, if you look at the total cost details, your total cost is 8,000. Even the given price, you will lose 200 rupees. But the problem is you have a capacity, right? You have a capacity of 5,000 units. Okay. 5,000 budget pack, but currently you are selling only 2,500. If you accommodate this one, you need not to incur any fixed cost. If you're not going to incur any fixed cost, then your cost will be variable cost. That is 6,800. If you agree with 7,800, you will earn additional contribution of 1,000 rupees. Because whether you produce or not, you have to pay fixed cost. That is favorable. Therefore, you have to accept this offer because your marginal cost is lower than marginal revenue that you can say like that because if you this if your variable cost if you calculate variable cost 4800 plus 2000 it is only 6800 therefore you can earn 1000 rupees more if you select 1800 but there is an other factor non financial factor you have to consider if you select 7,800 while selling the same product at 10,400, if other customers get to know that, then it will be big impact to your sales. Because you are selling same product at different prices, customer may be aware about that, then your sales will drop or they might leave you or they might ask to sell the same price as 7,800. Right, clear that you have to consider those are the qualitative factors you have to consider before selling. That is the answer for part B. Non -finan financial and non financial factors to be considered prior to sell these product. Based on that, you can earn thousand rupee more. That means your total profit will go up. Right. Okay. Now shall we move to question number four? Look at this one, question number four. This is relevant to net present value aspect and sensitivity analysis. Generally, we will do the sensitivity analysis. And I think I we have already discussed this area. In sensitivity analysis, you will look at, right? You will look at most, ident to identify most critical factor, which the small change in those critical factor will affect to the project viable or non-viability of the project. Therefore, you need to identify the most critical factor using sensitivity analysis. Right, okay. We will read question number four. Proven Private Limited RPL is evaluating the investment in an innovative product marketable for a period for four years. You are going to sell over four years. Okay. The total capital expenditure is rupees 50 million, right? Is 50 million, which is payable at the commencement, considering the positive net present value NPV based on the general cost of capital of RPL 15% per annum. A cost of capital 15%. In principle, approval has already been received for the investment. The following cash flows discounted by the general cost of capital related to this investment ah, right okay sales revenue variable cost fixed overhead also being given right however rpl's management is concerned with a special remark mentioned in the report of the market study that was carried out to evaluate the marketability of this product the report indicated that the investment is of high risk this investment is high risk 
when compared to other products in the market, uh, right? Because it's an innovative product, then you're going to launch this innovative product. Sometimes the product can be succeed or it can be a utter failure. It can happen. And you are working as a management accountant of RPL and are asked to perform risk evaluation of this investment. Guys, when I think you might have learned in project appraisal or risk and uncertainty lesson as well, you might have learned uh, risk and uncertainty and risk preference of the investors like risk seeker, risk averse, uh, risk neutral investors. Likewise, based on that, you might have learned about uh, their decision making rules, uh, maximax, maximin, minimax regret, those kind of things you might have learned under this uh, risk and uncertainty lesson. Uh, as a part of that, this sensitivity analysis is also there. The sensitivity analysis you will perform to identify most critical factor. Risk management part also there in the risk and uncertainty. I think you have learned that TARA framework, transfer, accept, reduce, avoid. Those are the four strategies. We have discussed in detail in the set of previous sessions as well. Right. Okay. Required. Advise the management on the sensitivity of NPV of the investment to RBL's cost of capital and sales volume contribution of sale. Simply, when you are going to do that, in sensitivity to cost of capital means you have to find out IRR. That means sensitivity to cost of capital means how much now your cost of capital is 15%, how much it at a which percentage it need to increase your cost of capital rate to become project is non-viable or project indifferent. That means the NPV equal to zero. Number two, how much at a which percentage your contribution should decline fall in order to be even project in uh, zero NPV. Right. We will see how to deal with that. Right. We will work it out quickly. Now, uh, based on the present condition, you have given the uh, sales variable cost fix overhead. Right. Now we will work out uh, cash flows and all. I will take this information quickly because we don't have much time. I will take this information. Right. Now these are the information we have we have available. I will take year zero year zero one year two year three year, year four. Right. Four year project figures are given in rupees thousand. Initial investment, 50 million, that is 50,000, you have to make at the beginning. Quickly work it out while I'm doing it, you have to quickly work it out because it is better if you can practice it. Nothing has mentioned about uh, here, then sales revenue. Sales, $1,000, $32,400, $62,900, $67,500, $42,000, right? Variable cost, it will be an outflow. It is minus $13,200, minus $26,500, minus $28,300, Minus 23,200. Right. Now you can take the uh, net, not net cash flow, it's like contribution. I will take this one as well and take the total. Then deduct fixed cost. 
fixed cost already there, 11,700, 10,250, 8.8 .8 million, 7.9 million. Right. Other than that, other than that, I think nothing is available. I will take net cash flow, net operating cash flow, net cash flow, net cash flow. We have the net cash flow here. Now you have discount at 15% is the cost of capital. Discount factor at 15%. Anyway, in the first year, discount factor is anyway one in year zero. Present value of one rupee today is one. Okay. Then first year discount factor one divided by 1.15. If you look at this one, it is 0 0.870. Again, I will divide by 1.15. Those are the discount factors. Now I will take discounted cash flows. Discounted cash flows. Net cash flow multiplied by discount factor, then you will get the discounted cash flows. Right. Now you can say NPV. NPV. You have to take the total initial investment and discounted cash flow. NPV is 776. Is something went wrong? Let me know. What is the initial investment? Uh, 50 million, right? Oh, now it is okay. I think this is okay, right? Registered solution, we can't take the answer, it is wrong. The NPV value is this much. 50,000 you will make initially. These are the collection. NPV of the project is 776. Now it asks to calculate what is the, uh, if you look at the requirement, it asks to calculate the sensitivity to the discount factor or cost of capital. You have to calculate at which discount factor sensitivity. That means, in order to convert this NPV into zero, what is the percentage of this discount factor should change? At 15%, your NPV is 776, right? Then, if, in, uh, if it want to be a zero value, what should be the discount factor? It should be greater than 15% or lower than 15%. When the discount factor goes up, your present values will fall, right? Then NPV will be zero or negative if you discount at a higher discount factor than 15%. Sometimes if it is 20, 25, then it will create a big difference. Okay, we will discount these cash flows by using 20%. Uh, I will take 20%. Okay, NPV at, I'll calculate NPV at 20%. 
okay first net cash flow i will say net cash flow net cash flow these are the net cash flows year 1 to 4 year 0 to year 4 discount factor at 20 percent discount factor at 20 percent anyway it first year it is one anyway right then first year, end of first year one divided by 1.2 in 8.33 right these are the risks. then we will calculate discounted cash flows right now if you calculate npv Here it is NPV minus 4,408. Now we ensure that, we sure that your IRR rate should be fall between 15, it should be greater than 15, but lower than 20. Then how to calculate IRR? You might have learned this too, IRR, IRR. We have to calculate IRR, how to calculate? IRR equal, you have to take lower discount rate, we call A plus NPV at lower discount rate divided by NPV at lower discount rate minus NPV at higher discount rate. Okay, into higher discount rate minus lower discount rate. Okay, now if we're looking at the scenario, A is 15% plus NPV at higher dis lower discount rate is 776 divided by NPV at lower discount rate mean 776 minus minus 400 minus 4408 okay then into into higher discount rate 20 percent minus lower discount rate 15 this is the formula Now we will work it out equal 15% plus. Seven hundred seventy six divided by seven hundred seventy six minus four thousand four thousand four hundred eight divided by so not divide by into twenty percent minus fifteen percent. Fifteen point seven five is your IRR rate. That means if your cost of capital increase from 15.75, your NPV become zero. As a percentage, how up to which extent your cost of capital can go up? Then if you calculate as a percentage, sensitivity to discount factor for cost of capital of capital equal now, if you look at 15.75 minus 15% as a percentage of 
15 percent with a percentage five percent exactly if it increased by five percent your NP will become zero that is the correct way to do that that means if your cost of capital increased by five percent your NP will become zero if the NPV falls zero mean if it is going beyond that point, you will end up with the negative NPV. Right. That is the sensitivity to the cost of capital. If you look at the sensitivity to the contribution, next one is sensitivity to the contribution. If you look at sensitivity to the contribution, selling price minus variable cost. Now look at present value of variable contribution. You have to work it out. Right. If I am work it out uh, at second sensitivity to present sensitivity sensitivity to contribution. How to calculate that? It will be NPV divided by present value of contribution contribution this is as a percentage multiplied by 100 now i will this is the contribution this is the contribution okay i will take the contribution each year contribution year 1 to 4 contribution Your one to four contribution. These are the contributions. Right. Discount factor at 15%. We have already worked out here. But here 8.70 like. Now discounted cash, discounted cash flow. Drag and drop. Then you can take present value of contribution. Present value of contribution. Seventy-nine thousand four hundred. So seventy-nine thousand four. Uh, net present value. That means NPV. NPV we have worked out here 776. Now sensitivity. Sensitivity to the contribution. You will divide 776 by 79,000 as a percentage. It is 0.98. Right. If you compare these two factors, which one has the highest sensitivity? Highest sensitivity. You can say cost of capital, that is wrong. The most critical factor is contribution. Why? If your contribution change by 0.98, by 1%, your NPV becomes zero or negative. But cost of capital need to be changed by 5%. Therefore, out of these two factors, most critical factor is contribution. This is most critical factor. Contribution is the most critical factor, right? We'll go back to the question and uh, advise the management of sensitive NP of that investment. Therefore, most critical factor is contribution. Small change in those sensitive factor maker create a big difference, right? That's all about part A. Explain how the adjusted discount rate could also to use eliminate the risk associated with the investment of the project, right? Now, if you have a higher risk project, when the risk is high, you will expect a higher return. Then you will expect higher return on investment. That means your required rate of return will go up. 
then in order to mitigate your risk or compensate your risk, you will expect higher return. That means cost of capital will go up. Right? That means your discount value or NPV value will fall when you increase the cost of capital rate because your required rate of return is increasing mean your cost of capital increase and present values will fall, right? Then that means since NPV is declining mean you have factored higher risk into the discount factor. Therefore, the possible thing can happen in order to accommodate higher risk, if therefore you have to increase the cost of capital rate. When cost of capital rate increases, your NPV or present value of future cash flows will fall. NPV will decline. Then it has it will happen. That you have to explain to someone else. You have to do that. Right? Clear. Hope you have understood. Now I am moving to question number five. This is generally in question number five. We are coming from a uh, working capital management. Very important lesson. Working capital management has a weightage of 10%. Right? Definitely there will be a question from working capital management. We need to look at. Okay. We will look at this question number five. This is the last question of section two. Last question of section two. Okay. We'll read the illustration and see what are they supposed to do. The Star Electronics Private Limited, SCL, sells various electronic items. It imports items directly from foreign manufacturers and sells them locally. One of its suppliers recently launched a new product and SEL is interested in marketing it locally. The survey performed indicated that it could sell an average 600 units a month consistently. That means if you sell 600 units per month, annual demand will be 7,200. How to work it out? 600 into 12, 7,200 units per month. The following additional details are available. The selling price of new product of the supplier is 5,000 per unit. Okay. SCL imports are handled by an outsourced service provider for which it charges a handling fee of 49,000 per shipment. This service provider has informed that it will make uh, it will take a minimum 10 days or uh, 10 days and maximum 20 days from the order time until the shipment is delivered to SCL warehouse. That means minimum order days, right? Minimum lead time and maximum lead time given. 10 days minimum, maximum lead time 20 days. Okay. SEL arranged the supplier's payment from the bank loan obtained an annual interest rate of 12% per annum. And the central warehouse has confirmed that it will incur 400 annually to hold one unit of inventory. Therefore, 400 plus, you have to consider finance charge over that as well. Okay. After successful negotiation, the procurement manager was able to secure price discount of 10% on the price in this product, which SCL support to place these 850 units per order. But currently, we are selling 600 units per month. SEL management is happy with this discount. In addition, SEL would like to manage its inventory and procurement function in a cost efficient manner. Okay, those are the information available. Advice whether SEL should accept the discount offered by the supplier in order to achieve the most economical order, economical inventory management cost, six months. Calculate buffer and safety inventory level for SEL. Okay. Explain the role of economic order quantity in working capital management. Right. First one we have to discuss uh, what would be the economic order quantity. You can remember economic order quantity how we calculate 2 into DCO demand, annual demand into cost of ordering divided by 
cost of holding per unit per annum, right? Therefore, cost of holding, what should be the cost of holding? Now, we have to work out what is the cost of ordering. Anyway, it is given 49,000, you can remember, you have to pay shipment charges. Cost of holding is given 400 rupees plus, there will be a finance cost on the arrangement, right? Then we have to see uh, what should be the economic quota quantity, okay? Based on the given information, right? Purchase price is 5,000. Right, we will work out quickly. I will show it to you how to work it out. This is question number five. E O Q equal. Uh, you have to take the root. Root. Two D C O. Divide by C H, right? This is the equation, right? Now, demand D equal 600 into 12, 7,200 units. Cost of ordering, it was there 49,000. 49,000. TH, cost of holding. How to find it out? 400 given, 400 rupees plus. Cost of holding, first there will be 12% finance charge. You have to hold one unit, holding cost mean one holding one unit per year. If you hold one unit per annum, what is the cost? You have to hold one unit. Cost will be 5,000. You have to charge a finance charge of 12%. That means simply it is 400 plus 600. It will be equal to 1,000 rupees. Your holding cost per annum will be 1,000 rupees. Now calculate what is the economic order quantity. Economic order quantity, if you calculate, then you can get based on EOQ formula, then calculate EOQ, then decide whether you will be getting, uh, can we get bulk discount or not. Quickly work it out. You can drop me then uh, drop me an answer, what is the economic quota quantity? Now you have the information, demand available, uh, cost of ordering and cost of holding available. Let me know the answer. Anyone? Guys, you have to do that. Now we are close to the exam. Right. I am not wasting any time. After computation, yes, one student has given answer. You see, Lakshika, yes, thank you. And Fernando, yes, thank you, guys. It is 840. Yes, exactly. Thank you, everyone. 840. If you place 840, can you get the discount? No. Your minimum order size is 850. If you order 840, you have to work out what is your total cost of inventory. Okay. If you order 840, your purchase cost, you won't get any discount. Then you have to order, you have to see what is the economic order quantity? EOQ 840, right, okay. Now I will work it out. Cost of purchasing. How to work it out? By, uh, you have to purchase 7,200 units, each 5,000. 7,200 into 5,000. 
cost of purchasing, then cost of ordering, cost of ordering. Per order, you will order 840, 840, uh, 7,200 each 840 per order cost 49,000. Right. Then I will work it out. 7,200 divided by 840 multiplied by 49,000. It is 4.2 million. At economic order quantity level model, when it comes to EOQ, your ordering cost should be equal to holding cost. That's very simple. Cost of ordering, cost of holding. Then average inventory to be multiplied by uh, uh, holding cost per unit per annum. Average quantity per order, 840 divided by 2 multiplied by holding cost is 1000 rupees. Then 840 divided by 2 multiplied by 1000. Is it 1420? Yeah, something went wrong. Sorry, PI yeah, should be 7,000. That's correct. Now your total cost of inventory will be this much based on economic order quantity. Now, if you receive a discount, right, you will get a discount of how much? We'll go to the original illustration. You will get a discount of 10%. If you receive a discount of 10%, then your working capital require you, you have to calculate what is your holding cost, right? Because it will be getting change. I'm going to this one with 10% with 10% discount. Demand there's no change. D equals there's no change, same as demand cost of ordering both will same. But cost of holding will change. C H equal 400 plus. Now your purchase price, your inventory holding cost include part of the finance cost. Now finance cost 5,000 into 12, 600 to be. Now it is not like that. Out of this 500, sorry, 5,000 rupee, you will get a 10% discount. That means you have to pay 90%. Right. That means 4,500. Out of that, finance cost will be 12%. Then if we calculate, your cost of holding will be how much? Your cost of holding will be 400 plus. Uh, 540, 400 plus 540, it is 940. It falls to 940. Now, if you calculate economic order quantity, now calculate EOQ. What is the EOQ value? Whether it fall above 850 or fall below 850. Quickly calculate EOQ and let me know the answer with 10% discount. What is the economic order quantity? Quickly work out and give me the answer. What would be the economic order quantity? You have demand, you have ordering cost, and you have the cost of holding now. What should be the EOQ? Yes, we'll see the answers. So thank you, Lakshika Nin Naduni. 866. Exactly. Thank you, everyone. It is 866, 866. Then if it is 866, entitled for, entitled for 10% discount. 10% discount. Now we will calculate 
total cost of inventory. We will calculate total cost of inventory. We will work out here. Here, anyway, your purchasing cost will change. 7,200 into 5,000. Now it should be multiplied by 90% because you will receive a discount. 7,200 into 5,000 into 90%. After factoring, cost of discount. Thank you, guys. Then cost of ordering, same as earlier. Now you will order 7,200. You will order 866. Cost into 49,000. There might be some minor differences due to the rounding it off. Cost of holding, 840 divided by, it's not 840, 866. Divide by 2 into 940. Your revised holding cost is 940. Equal 866 divided by 2 into 940. Minor difference is there. Right. Now you can see your total cost of inventory. Total cost of inventory. Declined. Declined. What is your suggestion? Now you can suggest it is worthwhile to obtain the order 850 units at once. And it will ensure that you, because 866 units you can order, and it will give a 10% discount, and your total inventory later will be reduced. That you have to mention. But <laughs> Total cost related to inventory will be reduced. Okay, I am going back to the illustration. And yes, six marks being allocated. Now you have you are asked to calculate buffer stock. You are asked to calculate buffer stock. Okay, how to calculate buffer stock? Okay, I will share when you are going to calculate buffer stock. Buffer stock. Buffer stock equal pre order level minus pre order level minus average lead time into average consumption. Reorder level, how to calculate reorder level? Reorder level equal maximum consumption consumption into maximum lead time. Maximum consumption, how much? Or maximum usage? It should be given. How many I have seen? Uh, A minimum 10 days, maximum 20 days. Right. Uh, average sale 600, ever, sell an average 600 units month continuously. Mm. Okay, 600 units per month. Okay, total they have given average consumption, average sales. Given 600, right? 600. 600 divided by uh, 
minimum plus maximum right minimum 10 maximum 20 right okay maximum consumption maximum consumption how to calculate generally you will consume uh, 600 unit you will consume over the period and this is for 30 days and maximum con early period will be 20 that means maximum consumption will be 400 units. Maximum consumption. Maximum lead time also given 20 days, right? Yes. The maximum consumption. Sorry, sorry. Maximum consumption will be 20. Six hundred divided by thirty. Maximum lead time. Twenty days. Therefore, reorder level. If you work out reorder level twenty into twenty, it is four hundred. Can't see the word. Sorry. 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 Sorry, guys. Now, buffer stock pre-order level minus average lead time into average consumption. Pre-order level means maximum consumption into maximum lead time. Maximum consumption. You will consume 600 units over 30 days. That means 20 units, right? Maximum lead time, it says 20 days. Therefore, maximum consumption for the period will be 400. Now, reorder level available, right, reorder level, then average consumption, average consumption into average lead time. Now we have to work it out. Reorder level there. Therefore, reorder level. Reorder level 400 plus average lead time. Average lead time can minimum plus maximum divide by 2. 20 plus 10 divide, sorry, divide by 2. That one aspect. Eight minus four hundred minus into average consumption. Average consumption given average they will consume six hundred over thirty days. Then if you can work out what should be the value of first stock. Twenty twenty into fifteen three hundred. That means hundred units. I hope you can see. Then. This should be 400 minus 300, that is 100, 100. Buffer stock should be 100. Yes, thank you guys. Buffer stock should be 100.
that is done. Explain the role of economic code quantity in working capital management. Economic code quantity means, guys, uh, the optimum size of unit, optimum order quantity to be ordered in order to minimize your holding cost and ordering cost. That means it will help to maintain sufficient level of inventory while minimizing your total holding cost and your ordering cost. That is the clear explanation. Maintain proper level of inventory in order to meet your day-to-day -day operational requirement, production requirement. And please note that uh, it will help to smooth functioning of the operation while keeping sufficient level of inventory without keeping or excessive inventory or while running out of inventory. Right, that is the role of EOQ. Now section three, this is the last section and you have been given 72 minutes. That means in this section two question to be completed, exactly now it is eight. 72 minutes mean 1 hour and 12 minutes. Right, we will identify and see how are we going to deal with this illustration. Okay. Read the question. Fantasy Private Limited FPL is a company that has three related business divisions. Three business divisions they have mentioned. Plantation, beverages and bottles. The company allows its divisional managers to maintain autonomy. Autonomy means guys, independent. They can make their own decision. You need not to worry, right? They can make their own decision. Uh, making operation. The following additional information is available for its operation. All right. Plantation. The plantation division grows organic fruits. There is an export demand for 80% of its harvest at 350 per kilogram and the rest is purchased by the beverage division at the transfer price of full cost plus 25 percent markup internally sales and externally also sell then if it is sell internally there will be transfer pricing problem there is no attractive local demand for these organic foods ah there's no attractive demand for local organic food that means that 25 percent you can't sell in local market Therefore, any unsold harvest could only be sold at the variable cost plus 30% markup to the local fruit sellers. Right. The following additional details are also available. Weekly harvest capacity 50,000 kilogram, variable cost per kilogram 170. Total weekly fixed production cost 2.5 million, whether you produce or not, you have to pay that. There is the variable cost saving of 20 rupees per kilogram due to reduced packing and transportation cost for intercompany sales. All uh, right, okay. Now we will see beverages. The beverage division has budgeted to produce and sell 5,000 juice bottles a week at 1,000 each using the intercompany food purchase. The division has the capacity to process 10,000 juice bottles a week. However, due to limited demand, Production is maintained at the current level. Uh, demand also limited. You are currently manufacturing 5,000 juice bottles per month. For a week. In addition to the fresh fruit input, the division buys glass bottles from the bottle division at 60 each and incurs an additional variable cost of 40 per finished juice bottle as a processing cost. The weekly fixed cost is 400,000 and any increase in the current weekly output level will result in additional fixed cost of 20,000 a week. Right, currently they are manufacturing 5,000. Proposal from a new organic fruit supply. The beverage division has been purchasing intercompany food since there was no other organic fruit suppliers in the market now. Market taking out of there. Therefore, they will purchase internally. But recently, a new plant approached the beverage division and offered Fresh food of the same quality at 220 per kilogram. This proposal is under consideration. Okay, we will see. We will see that. Bottle. 
the bottle division also has the capacity to make 25,000 bottles a week. Currently, the maximum weekly demand is 15,000 bottles from external buyers and 5,000 bottles from beverage division. The bottles division charges the same price of 60 rupees from the both internal and external customers. For weekly production, the division incurs 600,000 for material and other variable cost of 200,000 for processing. The weekly fixed production cost is 150,000. Okay. Proposal from a new customer. A EFPL re uh, receive a proposal from new bottle juice seller to subcontract its food juice processing work. FPL management referred this proposal to the head of the beverage division for consideration. This subcontracting arrangement includes the following terms. Weekly output 4,000 bottle. Customers input for the job, fresh food for the production. FPL input for the job processing work and glass bottles for filling. Fee suggested by the customer for FPL job is 100 rupees per output for the processing work and the glass bottle. Right. Now we have to do these calculations. Look at the requirement. This is a very good example. Come. Compute the impact on the plantation and beverage division profitability and the net profitability of FPL arising from the proposal of new organic fruit supplier to provide organic fruits at 220 per kilogram. Okay. Considering the proposal from new organic food supplier, evaluate whether the transfer price offered by plantation division meets the characteristic of good transfer price. Okay. Advice on the best transfer price that is suitable to promote intercompany sales and purchase between plantation division and beverage division. Considering the proposal from the new customer to subcontract processing of 4,000 food juice bottles a week, explain whether the present transfer price offered by the bottles division would motivate the beverage division to accept this new business opportunity. Support your answer with relevant computation five marks. Discuss how the dual pricing concept is applied for this scenario in light of corporate profit maximization. Support the answer with the relevant computation. Now with the given information, now we will see what is the current transfer price and how it will impact to the a divisional profitability and company profitability as whole. Right. Okay. Now here, if you look at about the three different uh, scenario, there are three division in this illustration. Three divisions. Three divisions. I will take this as an explanation for you and you can easily understand. There are three divisions. Here it is plantation. Here beverage and bottles division. Right. Plantation, beverage and bottles. Those are the three divisions. If you look at about the given information, I think what is the question? Yes. Based on the available information, if you look at about the plantation division, they have a capacity of 50,000 kilograms. Capacity 50,000 kilograms. Variable cost per kilogram equal to 170. 170. Mm, externally, you will sell 80%. External market. External 80%. External 80%. That means 40,000 external sales, external 
entails 40,000 kilograms. External selling price, selling price is given 350. 350. Now this plantation division sells the product, sells the product to beverage division. How many units they are selling? Balance 20%. That means 10,000. Uh, there's no attained local demand. Therefore, any unsold house could only be sold at the variable. Full cost plus 25% markup. Full cost plus 25% markup. Internal track, beverage division. And if you sell the internal. Full cost plus 25% markup is the selling price. This is selling cost here, extra selling cost for external 20 rupees per kg. Right. Five thousand bottle ten food purchase and division has the Right, 5,000 juice bottles they will produce. Right. Therefore, full cost plus 20% balance 10,000 kilograms. 10,000 kilograms full cost plus 25%. Here they have given a fixed cost 2,500. So two point five million. If you calculate full cost, variable cost is hundred seventy. Fixed cost per unit. If you calculate two point five divided by fifty thousand, it should be how much? Two point five divided by fifty thousand. It should be fifty rupees. They have a full cost will be 220. Full cost will be 220. The currently we are saying full cost plus 25% markup. Okay. Full cost plus 20%. They, therefore, selling price will be full cost plus 20%. Markup mean. So twenty five percent markup. Price will be two hundred seventy five. Now beverage has an option; they can purchase at external supplier at two hundred twenty. External supplier price. External supplier price. Two hundred twenty. Now, in this consideration, if beverage division decide to purchase externally, is it benefit to beverage division? Yes. Why they will get benefited? Right, current transfer price, how much? Uh, Current transfer price, what is the current transfer price? Current transfer price. Twenty-five percent full cost plus twenty-five percent mark. Right, okay. Then Sorry. And there will be a cost saving of 20 rupees. Cost saving, yes. We have to take the cost saving. Cost saving, to a cost saving. We have to deduct 20 rupees. Right. 
then it should be 250. Current transfer price. Current transfer price. 250 rupees. Current transfer price 250, but external supply offered at 220. Then definitely they will go and purchase from external supplier. Why? They, it is cheaper to them. If they decide to purchase externally, what is the benefit to them? Benefit to the beverage division. If I look at about the beverage division, they are benefit, benefit to beverage. What would be the benefit? Uh, yes, 300,000 saving. We'll see. Now, if they purchase externally, they have their cost will be 220. If they purchase internally, it is 250. Third rupee they can save. Now they are purchasing 10,000 kilograms. 10,000 kilograms into 30, 300,000 they can save. Right? They can save 300,000. Right? Benefit to beverage, and we can say beverage from external purchase is will be how much? 250 minus 220 into 10,000 units. 30 into 10,000. 300. There's a favorable rate. Benefit. What is the loss to the plantation division? Plantation division. They would have been earned some money. Now you they can't earn that amount. Right? They they are losing now. They can't recover that amount. Now they if they have sell internal, at least now they have the capacity. Now this excess production they can't sell at the given price. What is the loss to uh, this particular division. If they sell in locally, they can sell at how much? Variable cost plus 30% markup. Right? Then they will get only uh, internal sales. What is the contribution? Currently, they have a contribution of 250. Uh, what is their cost? Is 150. They are selling at 250. Their contribution 100. Therefore, we have to look at about the plantation effect to the plantation division. Okay. Effect to the plantation division. This is beverage. Now, plantation division, plantation. Currently, they are selling at 250, not selling price, 250. What is their loss of contribution? What is their contribution? Now they have variable cost, right? Uh, this is to be two fifty five. Sorry. I mean, 171 to 220 full cost 275, not 255. It should be now 20% saving. Then, therefore, variable cost should be 170 minus 20. Right, fixed cost 50, then full cost will be here 200 after deducting, uh, after deducting, uh. 20 rupee, then this should be 200, 200, yes. Yes, 200, this should be 250, cost saving we have taken here. This should be 250, then. this is the way. Variable cost saving, 20 rupee. 
Yes. Current transfer price 250, right? Then plantation division, their variable cost uh, contribution, contribution lost from internal sales. Now you have sold uh, 10,000 units internally, selling price 250, variable cost 150. Into 10,000 units, look at the value. It is 10,000 unit into 100. So one million. But if you sell internally, you would uh, sorry external market. There's an opportunity to sell at variable cost into thirty percent. External market, external uh, market uh, sale. You can get hundred seventy into thirty percent profit markup. You could have been earned into 10,000. That means 170 into 30%, 51 rupees into 10,000. 510,000 you can earn from the uh, external sales. Internally, you can't very If you can't, couldn't sell internally, you can sell them externally. Ultimately, net effect, if you look at, if you are not selling internally, net effect will be this much. Plantation division will suffer 490,000. Finally, in a company, overall company, company, due to this arrangement, how much overall company will lose? If they manufacture internally, they would have been, the cost would have been 150. Now you are paying much more than that, right? How much? You are paying much, 220 each. If you look at the net effect, overall company, if you add these two together, it is 190,000 overall company will lose. Overall company will lose by 190,000. Overall company will lose 190,000. Because this is the contribution and by beverage, this is the contribution lost, net profit lost by plantation division. Overall company, 190,000 will be lost. In a group or company point of view, this arrangement purchasing from external supply is not worthwhile. It is not worthwhile. Right. It is not worthwhile. You have to mention it is not worthwhile to purchase externally. Right. Then, part two of the illustration. Considering the proposal of the new organic food supplier, evaluate whether the transfer price offered by the plantation division meet the characteristic of best transfer pricing. Best transfer pricing, uh, uh, plantation division, not a good character because ultimately it should be uh, live with goal congruence. Goal congruence means it should be helpful to achieve organizational objective. But here they are looking at uh, we are looking they are not looking at the overall company point of view if they follow this transfer pricing mechanism ultimately it will happen impact overall company profitability it will dilute company profitability therefore it is not suitable then uh, if you look at about this given situation uh, entire production they can't sell the transfer pricing should be set by looking at the best transfer pricing mechanism Marginal cost plus opportunity cost, right? I will write it down. The best transfer price which I can suggest, the optimal transfer price, TP, should be marginal cost plus, plus opportunity cost. Then if there's no market there, then there won't be any opportunity cost. Then you have to transfer minimum transfer price should be marginal cost. Then if it is based on uh, this concept, you can easily uh, achieve 
the organizational objective, right? Give me a second. Part C. If you want to show the answer, I will show you the answer. Part C also. Look at minimum transfer price. It says yes. Yeah. Minimum transfer price. The minimum transfer price that plantation should be willing to occur the sum of marginal cost plus opportunity cost. Right. Now here you can see marginal cost of production. If you sell internally, your marginal cost will be 170 minus 20, 150 rupees. Opportunity cost. If you sell internally, you have to forego on. If you can sell uh, them externally at, uh, at a contribution, you can earn 51 rupees, 170 into 30 percent, right? In a local market, that means your minimum transfer price should be 201. Maximum price should be external supply price, 220. Therefore, when we determine the optimal transfer pricing range, minimum should be marginal cost plus opportunity cost. Maximum should be external supply price. This is the best way to determine the optimal transfer price. The next one, what they asked to do, uh, beverage divisions proposal. Look at the beverage divisions proposal. Considering the proposal from new customer to subcontract the processing of 4,000 fruit juice bottles a week, explain whether the present transfer price offered by the bottle division would motivate beverage division to accept this new business opportunity. Now look at this one in bottles division. Uh, they manufacture 25,000 bottles a week. Currently maximum weekly demand 15,000. That means 10,000 they have an ideal capacity, right? Uh, bottle division charge same price 60 from the both internal ex external. That is not the suitable way to do that, right? For weekly production, the division incurs 600,000 material and other variable cost of 200,000 altogether. This cost will be 800,000, right? 15,000 external, 5,000 uh, internal, altogether 20,000, right? Give me a second. Uh, therefore, total 800,000, if you divide by, I will work out, Total variable cost here, 800,000. If I divide 800,000 by total current production, 200,000, current variable cost will be 40. Now, you have capacity of 25,000, but excess production, there's no, uh, no external market, right, uh, uh, beyond 15,000. External minimum transfer price should be 40 rupees. Therefore, 60 rupees is not suitable. Therefore, minimum transfer price should be 40 since there's no external market, right? That you can clearly explain. You are not agree with that one. Uh, because, because it is not suitable because if you charge 60 rupees as same as external supplier uh, they won't motivate because their processing cost also will increase okay, what is the processing cost mm. beverages their processing cost look at fruit input the division buys glass bottle from division at 60 each and incurs additional variable cost of 40 rupees per bottle to finish then if it is 60 plus 40, it will be 80 rupees, 100 rupees. Now, uh, external supply also offered at 100 rupees. Then they won't get any benefit. Therefore, they will not accept. But actually, they have cost only 40 rupees plus 40. Um, why, the, why didn't bottle division 
fixed cost should not be considered for that because fixed cost you can't consider the reason fixed cost weekly production cost of fixed production cost uh, will not be if it is increasing it has to be considered right uh, here here to, uh, not 80 this 20000 if it is increased by 20 present production level assume 15000 if it increased by additional amount you have to incur additional 20000 that means you are going to increase by 4000 bottles then we will work out i will show you the workout working now uh, current uh, production cost if you look at about uh, material cost 600000 material cost 600000 variable overhead 200000 this is 6 plus 800000 this is for the output of current output twenty thousand current output therefore variable cost per unit will be eight hundred thousand divided by twenty it is forty hope you have understood then Now, if you uh, look at about um, beverage division, now beverage division currently this is the variable cost per bottle. Per bottle, beverage division currently purchase the bottle at sixty rupees. Sixty plus processing cost forty, then it is hundred. But now, if we transfer this bottle at variable cost, if you assume, if you accept this new order, if you accept this new order, 4,000 bottle juice, if the present production volume increase uh, by 4,000, your weekly fixed cost will increase by 20,000, right? Additional variable cost to finish the juice will be 40. It will be fall to 40. This become 40, it will be 80 plus this 20,000 additional. Okay, if I share the answer script again, additional, if you decide to produce additional 4,000 bottles, uh, additional variable cost 40, variable cost per bottle. 40 incremental fixed cost incremental fixed cost 20000 will be incremental fixed cost for 4000 units it will be 5 rupee this is how total 85 rupee will arrive therefore marginal cost per unit Marginal cost. Then, if they have to supply at hundred rupee each bottle, they will get fifteen rupees as a profit. Then they will motivate. They won't act before purchase at uh, sixty. Then sixty plus if we purchase bottle at sixty, sixty plus forty hundred, hundred plus five hundred five. Then they will end up with the loss. Therefore, they won't will not agree with the present transfer price. I will show you the answer. Look at. Where total variable cost bottles variable cost on processing 60 plus 40 100 this will be 105 loss will be 5 then they won't agree with this one but input material 30 variable cost from the bottle division perspective is 40 then total cost of production will be 85 if it is transferred at marginal cost and total production cost will be 85 then gain or loss from bottle is 15 if they accept this new offer 60,000 profit will be there, right? That is your answer. Now, finally asked, if you apply dual rate transfer pricing, how it will be built? 
Discuss the dual rate transfer pricing concept is applied for the scenario in life of corporate profit maximization. Now, in this scenario, what we can do for dual rate transfer pricing, now bottle division willing to sell at 60, beverage division willing to sell at purchase at 14. I will take this one, how to apply dual rate transfer pricing, I will explain. In dual rate transfer pricing, beverage division is the purchasing division. Purchaser. Here is the seller. Right. They are trying to purchase that. They will record their purchase, internal purchase. At record internal purchases at marginal cost. Marginal cost. Simply, they will record it at 40 rupees record at 40 rupee per bottle. Seller, they are trying to increase their revenue. They will record the sale at market price. Right, record the sales at market price. Record price, price will be 60 per bottle. Mias, he will record the revenue at 60. He will record the purchase at 40. The difference will be adjusted to the group column because both managers are satisfied. They won't take any suboptimal decision. That means they are not trying to maximize their own profitability. Right. Therefore, what they will do they will put, they will satisfy both will satisfy if dual rate transfer pricing apply right okay now i will move to the last illustration right question number seven i am a little bit faster because within the given time period i need to come now it's related to npv calculation uh, and it has given 20 marks. Okay, we'll read quickly. Knowledge Hub Private Limited KHL is engaged in the business of printing check leaves, plastic security card, and various security documents. KHL is in the process of evaluating two capital proposals, uh, project appraisal, two proposals to be evaluated. You are working as the management accountant of the company and have been asked to evaluate the two proposal with your boss at the head of finance. Uh, you are provided the following information with regard to the two proposals. Okay, read proposal A. KHL is planning to invest, planning an investment to launch a news weekly newspaper. The company plans to consider this investment for a period of four years after we. The management expect the residual value of the investment is 10% of the market value of a similar capital asset at that time. The following uh, is relevant for the investment. Uh, it is given. Initial capital investment, I expected inflationary factor 7% per annum. Expected selling price per newspaper 10, uh, 50 rupee and it will increase by 10% per year. Fixed operating cost. 10 million working capital requirement 12 million it will be required immediately company depreciation straight line depreciation allowance for tax purpose 25 percent anyway depreciation we won't count uh, right inflation factors stated in the above table are effective from first year of operation from the first year of operation it will be effective that means from year one onwards forecasted revenue on yearly basis is given below Sale of newspaper, number of copies given 3 million, 4 million, 5 million, and 5 million. Revenue from advertisement also given. Revenue from advertisement is stated using the future cash flow basis. KHL's cost of capital 12% per annum. The general inflation 4.47 per annum and profit of this operation is liable for income tax at 24% in the year, which is the liability right. Uh, that means it specifically mentioned taxes should be paid in the same year which it arises. 
the management of KHL need to know the recommendation of the proposal from finance division before going forward. That is proposal number one. It is a simple uh, project appraisal question. We can do that. Proposal B. The sensitivity car, security car printing machine is due for replacement at present. The machine currently costs rupees 1.5 million. The annual maintenance cost and expected residual value at the end of each year. Free appeal for the providing as following table. Okay. Maintenance cost 3, 5, and 8.5. Residual value also given. The management of KHL. Expecting to evaluate the optimal replacement cycle of the printing machine. The head of finance has advised you to consider discount rate of 17% and ignore the impact from taxation and inflation for evaluation of this option or proposal. Uh, now we have to uh, work out this solution. Quickly we'll do. We have to evaluate this proposal, right? Okay. The project will last for four years, as I can remember. Four years. Therefore, year zero, year one, year two, year three, and year four. Initial investment, initial investment. Initial investment in rupees thousand, it is hundred million. I will make it in rupees thousand. Hundred million mean hundred thousand. Uh, then we'll take uh, what is the residual value? Is it given? Residual value, give me a second. Residual value. Residual value, uh, is it given anywhere else? Uh, Ten percent market value of a similar capital, right? This project, if it is the market value, so you have to calculate hundred million over seven percent each. It will be inflated, and ten percent of that market value to be considered, right? Okay. Uh, we will work out like this. Now you have invested hundred million. What is the uh, market value? If it is market value ten percent fluctuation. If this value multiplied by 1.07, right? 1.07 over four years time. Four years time. This is the market value after four years time. Out of that, you have to consider 10%. Ten percent. It should be thirteen thousand one hundred eight. Thirteen thousand one hundred eight. 
market price. Market price means after considering the inflation, 100,000 worth will be 131,080 after four years, 10% of the market value. This is the amount. You have to consider this amount as the market price. Then 10% of market price, 13,108. Then we will look at other information. I think I have shown the answer. 13,000, how I obtained 13,100. 100,000 into 7% over 4 years into 10%. Right. Then expected selling price per newspaper, 50. Uh, variable operating cost, 45 per newspaper. 5 rupee will be the contribution. It will increase by 10% over next over period. And sale of newspaper will be given. Right. Then I will take contribution. It is not a big deal, guys. Contribution. Contribution. I will take 50 minus 45 into 1.1. This is the uh, selling price or contribution per unit into number of newspapers we sold in first year. 3 million. Right, 3 million in rupees 1000 should be 3000. 16,500. Uh, next period. Next period. This. First, we will. Oh, sorry, we will put a work there. Give me a second. Then it will be easy for you. Work in number one. I will put the work in here. Working number one. We'll take the selling price. Sorry, contribution per unit. Contribution per unit. 50 minus 45 into 1.1. 5 rupees and 50 cents. Next year it is multiplied by 1.1. 1 .1. 5 rupees and 50 cents. This is the contribution. Sales unit. Sales. Year one, it is three million. That means three thousand units. Four million, four thousand units. Five million, five thousand, five thousand. Then contribution. I will work out three thousand into five point five sixteen thousand five hundred. Drag and drop. You can get the contribution working. Right. Contribution working. Then advertising revenue, I will increase advertising revenue. It is it is given in the illustration itself. Advertising revenue. Uh, 20 million, that is 20,000 in the first, first year. Second year, it is 25 million, 25,000. Then 30 million, 30,000. And 35 million, 35,000 advertising revenue. Fixed operating cost also again, fixed operating cost. Fixed operating cost, if you look at, I will show you fixed operating cost. Fixed operating cost 10 million per annum it will increase by five percent over year then i will work out minus 10 million increased by five percent over year each year it will increase by five percent then drag and drop right Now cash flow before working cap working capital adjustment to be done. I will take cash flow before working capital and tax. Cash flow before before working capital and tax. 
you can take the total working capital there will be a working capital requirement of 12000 it is an outflow at the beginning of the year it will be recovered at the end then taxation taxation i will put working number 2 working number 2 taxation working number 2 I'll take cash flow before tax, tax and working capital. These are the cash flows. And you can claim capital allowances as can remember, not accounting depreciation. Capital allowances can be claimed at 25% allowances on the cost. 100 million you this 100 million you can or you can claim 25 percent that means 25,000 you can claim over four years 25,000 then you can get the taxable profit taxable profit deduct capital allowance, these are the taxable profits. Tax rate is 24%, tax at 24%. There's no big deal with this one. This is the taxation at 24%, right? The taxes will be paid in the same year which it arises. You can deduct taxation as a cash outflow to 14 first year. Likewise, you can drag and drop. Now you can take the net cash flow. Net cash flow. Net cash flow. Discount factor. We have to have a working, working number three. Discount factor. We'll see. Discount factor. It says, look at this one. KHL real cost of capital 12% per annum. The general inflation at 4.47. Now, since these cash flows given in different discount rate, you have to discount these cash flows by using nominal discount rate. Right. Therefore, we will calculate by using features equation, we will calculate nominal cost of capital okay i will work i will show you how to do that nominal cost of capital nominal cost of capital discount factor how to calculate that one plus one plus nominal rate for your understanding i'm writing one plus real rate into one plus inflation rate. Here, one, so one plus nominal rate, we need to find it out. One plus real rate, one plus 12% into one plus 4.47%. If we work out nominal rate, 1.12 into 1.0447 minus 1, it will be 17%. Cost of capital will be 17%. Therefore, I will take at 17%, discount factor at 17%. Here yeah, it will be 1, then 1 divided by 1.17. Then here divide by 
Right. Now we can calculate discounted cash flows into If you calculate NPV, Balan Harila is very easy. Sum NPV is 2905. That is the answer which required by the illustration. First, they asked to work out what is the NPV of the proposal one, 10 marks received. Right, look at the requirement it says if you work out now you will receive the information now next one uh, look at the next part of the question This is the answer. Compute the optimal replacement cycle for the security card printing. Okay. Maintenance cost, if you, after one year, if you replace, maintenance cost will be 3 million and residual value 10 million. Maintenance cost will be 5 million in year 2 and residual value will be 7 million. Year 3, maintenance cost 8.5 million, residual value will be 2 million. That means when it comes to get a year more and more years, then your replacement cost will go up. And as a result, you can see one year replacement cost of machine will be 15 million. Right? Year 1, you can see. You can save 10 million, maintenance cost 3 million, 7,000 will be the cost. If we calculate net present value after first year, it is 9,050. That means simply, if you purchase 15 million worth machinery after one year, you can dispose it at 10,000. That means 15,000 into 10,000. And you might have incurred during that period 3,000 maintenance cost. That net cash flow 7,000. Initially, 15,000 is an outflow. Then if you calculate the present value, it is 9,015 negative. Right. Therefore, then you can go up to equal annual cost will be 10,543. Not you can't incur 15 million. A two-year replacement cycle, present value will be 16.103 million because you will collect 7,000, not 10,000 in year one. And again, present value, uh, if you look at about the cost, annualized one, equal annual cost will be 10.153. If you look at about three year recycle, the cost will be, present value will be 25 million. Annualized value will be 11,437. 11, 11, if you look at about these three options, this second option will be much favorable. Annualized uh, cost, right? Annualized cost will be 10,153. Therefore, it should be replaced in each two years. This is like NPV. The net NPV, annualized NPV, this has the lowest cost option. Therefore, each machinery should be replaced in each two years. Uh, then part C, what part C, last part. Demonstrate with an example of the usefulness of profitability index for companies when selecting an investment project from several mutual exclusive investment. It looks like this. Assume, I'm taking for an example, you have two investment opportunity A and a B. By looking at the uh, NPV, investment A gives 100 million net present value. 
NPV B, NPV project B will give 500 million NPV. By looking at the net present value, you might feel project B is much preferable because it gives the highest NPV. But if you look at about their investment value, investment, investment value, this investment they have made uh, 500 million investment investment here it is uh i will say 5000 million Five thousand. now the size of the investment is stiffer and that's this, that this situation you can't make the decision based on absolute NPV. Then you have to calculate profitability index. How to do that? Profitability index PI equal NPV plus initial investment divided by right divided by Initial investment. Initial investment. If you work out this illustration accordingly, now if you work out this one, 100 divided by 500, 100 plus 500 divided by 500, we got 1.2 times. Here it is 1.1. .1. If you calculate based on profitability index. Option A, project A will give the highest profitability index. Therefore, no, without looking at NPV absolute value, you have to look at about when the investment is different, you have to calculate profitability index. Then based on profitability index, you have to offer, you have to select a project which has the highest profitability index because it gives the highest uh, NPV on investment you have made. That is the answer for that part. We'll see, are there any other question to be? Therefore, in this situation, project A should be selected. Now we have came to the conclusion prior to that, I need to highlight since you are uh, ready for your final examination, I need to highlight very important fact, the important thing you need to consider in the coming, we come to the final exam. When it comes to final exam, you have to focus on three factors to succeed. First one is C. What is C? It says about concentration. Concentrate. You have to concentrate, okay? It's concentrate. You have to, that means concentrate, meaning you have to focus. Without focusing, you won't succeed. Concentrate, right? The next one is understand the concept, what you have learned, right? The next one will be you. You. You means, right? You mean you will understand the concept. Understand. You will understand. Final one, practice. You have to practice what you have done. Right? P. Right, practice. Then if you look at this one, that means there's a cup mean concentrate, understand and practice. Make your own cup. That mean make your own cup mean concentrate, understand and practice. If you 
look at about the understand you if you focus on these three aspect you will be able to succeed the whole, it is very important if you uh, look at about this situation uh this is very close to examination therefore you have to concentrate understand and practice that will cup concept hope you have understood uh, i have seen this is three hour paper i can't uh, spend much time because if it is better if i can explain over four five hours while little by little then it will be much clearer but if you have done your homework then once i'm doing this you should be able to complete that one complete the illustration right therefore hope you have understood the concept and you will be able to uh, uh, pass the exam if you really concentrate and do the past papers and practice more and more questions this is not a difficult exam if you work smart and hard right uh, i think this is the uh, end of the session and investment to be not 10% it is one point. investment plus npv we divided by the investment right uh, anyone has a question if you have any question let me know uh, otherwise we can conclude the session if you have any clarification you can either contact me and because i had a little time to explain i have passed forward and explained because i need to complete the entire paper and finally i would like uh, if you anyone wanted to contact me i will because i am willing to help you all uh, then i will drop my uh, mobile number in the chat and if you want uh, the it will be shared and then you can clear any doubts please uh, spend your time fruitfully and thank you for joining uh, i think you will be able to get maximum benefit out of it and wish you all the best for your final exam work hard work smart and pass the exam i think this is the end of the session for today uh, arun shall we conclude the session yes this will be the video will be recorded and you can watch and thank you everyone for joining and wish you all the best for your future endeavors and for your final exam uh, for ama and definitely you can do it concentrate and don't demotivate still you have time focus on your studies and do more past papers remember nothing will be tested beyond the syllabus area therefore you have to focus on thank you and have a good day and have a good